Okay, good morning. How are you doing? Hope you're good. We're in for another week. We are so excited about this week. Uh, let me begin by actually thanking immensely everybody that uh, made our event possible over the weekend. We had such a wonderful time. Our event ran from 10 to 3.30. I tell you, we overestimate, we underestimated. It went over by an hour and a half, but it was a very loaded event. As those of you that were able to attend, you can testify. The quality of the event was top-notch international standard. Uh, we always pride ourselves in taking quality to a whole new and other level. And we're able to do that. We had all our five speakers feature. It was just an amazing event. And you know, one of the things that really uh, moved me about the event is just the amount of, of zeal that people had in terms of listening and learning. And there's so much we as the organizers also learned in that event. Uh, a lot of times when you run events of that nature, you know, there's that Murphy's law, which states that if something can go wrong, it will. We've always believed instead in the other Murphy's law that states if something can go right, it will. That's how we we counter it. But it was, an, it was a very, very uh, positive event. We were able to learn even more. And when you combine this with the real estate event we had uh, uh, a month before, that was very eye-opening. Now, what is interesting uh, for people like us who run events is that the real estate event that was actually more expensive actually costed, um, <laughs> sorry, you can go to back to them, good girl. I'm just talking to my daughter. So I was saying that the real estate event actually uh, costed more and had far more attendance, like almost 100. And then this one, which costed less, had less attendance. So the lesson, now this is me speaking to you who run events and who run um, uh, your coaches and you do services. One big takeaway from that event is very simple. The price has nothing to do with it. It's got to do with your target audience. So if your target audience are the type that cannot afford your fee, they, then you will have less people and less, uh, and they'll complain about a lower fee. But if your target audience has the money, it doesn't matter because they will pay it. And uh, for example, the real estate, if you think about it, real estate are people that are about to invest in very, very high sums. Uh, on average here in Zambia, I mean, it's not much out there, but here in Zambia it is, the average house, that's a three bedroomed house, average, you know, built and uh, all things being equal to, you know, good standard will cost you today, if I'm not wrong, probably 250, 300,000 quarter, including a tank, wall, the whole works, paving, you know, finishing inside fittings, about three, 400, yeah, 300, 350,000, the average three bedroom house, master self-contained bedroom. And, uh, you know, if you add the plot, you add the servicing charges, you add all the other unforeseen. So we're probably looking about 400,000. And then if the plot is in a very high, um, you know, if it's in an area that's expensive, then obviously that will go higher. But what's interesting about all this is the, the biggest takeaway. And the biggest takeaway was simple. It's that if somebody is going to spend that kind of money, they are willing to 750 quacha, a thousand quacha is nothing to them. But then to the real to the, the current group that we had, these are entrepreneurs doing their best to get into the space. So many of them are really just starting. It was amazing. Our fee was only 500. In fact, we started off with 300 on super early bird. That lasted about two, three weeks. And then we went to early bird and, and all that, all the way to 500. And what's interesting to note is that a lot of people were messaging on the wall, on, on social media and saying, oh, I wish I could attend, but this is too expensive for me. Oh, I wish I could. So you realize it's the kind of audience. So it's very important. I can tell you when we next do our next event, uh, there are certain types of people we're going to have, and it will be targeting a certain audience. So even if we put 2,000 quacha, they'll pay. 5,000, they'll pay. 10,000, they'll pay. Because why? It's the kind of audience. And I think that that's a very important lesson to all of you here. Something that uh, one of our speakers said that I love so much, he said, the first thing you have to do is look at your value and get rid of cheap prices depending on the service you're offering. Set yourself to a certain standard and stick with it. And if you're providing the value and you're bringing the, the quality into what you're doing, and then you build a proper clientele, your price will not be an issue. So don't apologize for your pricing as well. 
Just be willing to stick by it and don't make, don't sell yourself cheap. Don't compromise on, on what you have to offer because a lot of people tend to do this. So anyway, at this point, let me quickly invite um, uh, my upline and Sylvia to come through and do the morning greet before I invite our speaker. So, uh, and Sylvia, over to you for our usual morning greet. We have a very amazing speaker today and I'll introduce you properly. Over to you, Auntie Sylvia. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's so cool. Yes, um, good morning everyone and thank you for joining us once again. These are the, you know, the things that we do for our quantum leaping and every day is really super. So this morning as we come up, you know, um, I, I learned quite a bit um, uh, over the weekend. Uh, we were celebrating our um, mom's 94th birthday and it, it, it was just so, so amazing. And you know, she kept on saying, for me, even if I die today, I've done my bit. So you who are still there, what are you, what are you doing? What difference are you making in people's lives? And she told us one thing that really stuck to my heart. She said, I have never hate anyone, willingly hate anyone. I have never hated anyone and I've never hurt anyone. I explain myself very well so that whoever is around me gets to understand who I am and what value I carry. So when you speak about value, you are speaking about things that really make people know who they are and what they can give. If you've got no value, you are not even going to pay 500 quarter, even 100 quarter you are not going to pay. So it doesn't matter what is on offer. It is you. What value do you place on yourself? What, can, what difference can you make? So when people float, like for me, I don't change my price. I know my value. I know what I am giving. I know the things that you will get out of when you come to my training. I know what you will get. And there is value on that. So let's continue to just nature ourselves. Let's continue to, you know, to pick the positive out of something that we're going to get. If we're always in the positive, we are going to carry ourselves forward. If you, if you say you can never afford, yes, you will never afford because that's what you're claiming from the genie. You know, we have talked about this all the time. We have talked about this all the time. So if you cannot afford, yes, you will never afford anything and you always be where you are because you are not making, you are not putting value on the things that you are going to get and you're not putting value on yourself that this is who I am and I'm going to afford this. For me, I can afford anything because I will work towards it. I will make sure that I, you know, I have resources. I am getting resources because I'm working. If I cannot afford a hundred quarter, there must be something wrong with me because every day when I look at my phone, I look at my, you know, my friends around me, I look at what I have invested in school, what, how can I not afford a hundred quarter? It means I'm cheating myself and I'm not going to develop. So Correct. be prepared to spend, be prepared to go and get value and also give value. Is what we're saying about relationships and friends. Anyway, long story. So we'll talk about it in, in tomorrow's session of um, success, you know, using, using networks to succeed. Because you could, you could have asked your friends to give you 500 quarters and you participate and you get the value that you, you, you must get and then you can go on. So over to you, Rave. Uh, please have an open mind as we go to, you know, to learning. Wonderful. So now at this point, it gives me great pleasure to, to introduce uh, a man that uh, I recently met almost about four months ago. And uh, we have built a very, very wonderful relationship over the last uh, number of months. It's grown immensely. <clears throat> and what's so interesting about this man, this gentleman, is that we met 
because of my TED talk. So we met actually on the altar of Pan-Africanism, very interesting platform in which we met. He is the author and founder, creator, and uh, progenitor of what is called the Rapid Africa Plan or the RAP. And he wrote a 650 page treatise entitled the Riot Act. And this is the special document with Africa's 40 year rapid advancement plan uh, for turning Africa into a first world uh, platform. An amazing man by all standards. And I've grown to really love and respect this man. And uh, he's very deep in, uh, in, in the concepts of quantum uh, and, and mental mechanics. And uh, so it gives me great pleasure today to actually introduce him to speak uh, further to us for the next 18 minutes concerning this concept. He has aptly entitled his type, uh, his message, Mental Mechanics to Achieving a Quantum Leap. Let, without further ado, let's put our hands together and welcome Professor Hannington Mubaiwa. Prof, over to you, sir. Prof, I think you need to unmute your mic. <laughs> <laughs> oh really? I didn't know you could speak with yes. your mic. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we, I didn't know you couldn't speak with your mic muted. So yeah, right. yeah. Uh, over to you, sir. Yeah, well, I think that uh, um, it's always like uh, it's always an honor to to uh, to have a person who admires one or two things about you. But sometimes when they when they talk about it, they they don't. They don't realize it's only them that are seeing the <laughs> the glory, the friendship. You know, someone must just be an ordinary person uh, doing one or two things uh, to help humanity. Now, you know, um, I'm very, very, very grateful. I believe in a thing called the, uh, you know, divine serendipity. I'm going to be joining on the computer. I was kind of trying to get uh, my my link. I came. I came in a few minutes ago. So if you hear double, I'm gonna change over very quickly. Okay, so Prof is moving over to his other gadget. Let me just see where he is. All right, he's come back on, I think. Let me just see. Uh, he's moving to his other gadget, hopefully. I think it's this one. So let's wait a bit. He will be uh, coming on and then as soon as, oh, there he is. Okay, so let me quickly allow him apologies okay. i'm right there i'm right there. okay great stuff so i was just making you giving you screen share ability okay thank you very much so wow oh my god i'm so so excited to to see you know our people you know these days <laughs> when i see an advert uh, uh yeah they call it a commercial on tv and i and i see you know there's an african there I'm beginning to see a beauty. I'm building a beauty uh, against any other. But you know, the 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 African person is just is just better. Is just different. Is just unique. Uh, and that when they do their thing, you know, they do it well. So you know, and I say, I, I always say that I'm a, I'm the number one fan of the African. So I'm your number one fan. Don't listen to what anybody else has ever told you. Uh, I'm the one. <laughs> Thank you very much. So, you know, it's very exciting to see there's a lot of uh, young people here. Uh, I know there's an old man, there's an old man here called uh, Chune. <laughs> he's inspector. Well, he's, he's become my new friend. Uh, he's one of the fastest uh, uh, strategists that I've seen. You know, he takes action right there and then. So it's, it's awesome. Now, you know, I'm a Zimbabwean, in the name of Zimbabwean, talking about Zimbabwean, but in the name of Chewa, Waku Mzuzu, Waku Dini, Waku Mzuzu, in the name of Chewa Mutonga, sorry, I'm a Mutonga, I forgot, I thought I was, I was talking Malawi. When I'm in, in any, I change uh, my nationality depending on the country, so I thought I was in Malawi, but in Zambia, in a Mutonga, in a Wayanda Ula, Wayanda Makanja, Wakonga Lungu, Wawelele Hamatoho. Now who can doubt that I am <laughs> I, I I am Zambian true true. So you know um, I don't have a lot of time, but uh, what we are going to do is I'm gonna there's a few things you know the the Reverend 
you know, mentioned this idea of the book that I wrote. I wrote the book called uh, The Riot Attack, uh, The African Master Research. Uh, it's a book I wrote because I went to research to find out what is wrong with Africa and what can be done. And I found out that uh, we needed a plan. And uh, then I realized that, look, we need to help our people, our children, uh, so that they can have a picture of how to build um, an economy for themselves. By the way, I didn't put a video. You know, some people may want to see my bald head. Some people specialize in looking at bald heads. So yeah, there we go. There I am. <laughs> so, so, you know, the, the reason why I'm referring to that is that, you see, I went to study by myself. If someone was going to do a PhD, you know, the, it's narrow. But for me, I ended up studying a lot of stuff. But the interesting part that I found, there are two things. Number one, things are spiritual. Number two, things are science. Number three, um, there's a thing called the psychology of the human or the nature of the human. I found that very, very interesting to the extent that I actually have, and you know, I'm, I kind of developed an institute. I have, I have two students so far from my institute. It's called the Institute of Human Emergence. Right, Did you, you heard what I said, right? The Institute of what? Of human emergence. So the first thing is this, that, um, you know, we were designed by God to continuously unfold for the purpose of what? Of emerging. So we're designed to emerge. The individual was designed by God to emerge, in order to rise, it, but it's in steps. You know, people know about the hierarchy of needs, right? So it's in steps. Now those steps, there's a science to each step. The first step is the first thinking. The second step is the second thinking and so forth and so forth to seven stages. And so at each stage, the, to move from this stage to the, to, to the next stage, there's a thing that people call seeing or a vision. Now, I, I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail here today, but I just wanna, I, don't, I just want to show you that you can explode uh, your growth. You can explode your growth. You can ex explode your life in every area, but there's one common thing. And everyone talks about it, the, it, the, idea of the, the idea of a vision. Many people talk about the idea of a vision. Many people talk about the idea of a strategy, right? And then many people talk about knowledge uh understanding wisdom now these things i found out that there's a way that they're all packaged in order for you to maximize the people who you know who grow fast or explode their lives have followed the process uh, some of them you know part of it they learn as they go but they have an ingredient that kind of that kind of um some of them are born with, with this ingredient already, with this, with this, or they, they, they are born with a more developed area of the inner constructs uh, of how we grow. In other words, God created us in such a way that within us are things, constructs. I'm gonna show you some of them uh, in a minute. So at the end of the day, uh, the, the idea of, a, of explosion is to start with this thing called choice. If you cannot create a choice or choices, you have to create choices. Now, when you create those choices, now you have to choose one choice. Now you find that out of those choices, one of them is based on a seed that God has already put in you. But the, to recognize that is the science, to recognize that is the key. I think that when you, if you look at uh, all the training that, uh, you know, the Reverend is doing and, and many other people, it all boils down to uh, ultimately taking action. But for you to take action, you have to make, you have to take, you have to take, uh, to make a choice. But when we are thinking about these things, we just say, you know what? I want to make, I want to succeed in this. I want to make money, I want to buy a house, I want to buy a car. But, but we don't, we are not taught 
in our classes, in our school, the nature of the human. We're not taught, taught how to start and start the right steps so that you have this, you know, you have this, um, this growth pattern that at some point it explodes and you enter into a leap. Any, any growth of any individual starts low, it starts at the bottom. And then as they learn, as they get more knowledge, at some point, they have enough knowledge now for them to go into uh, what is called a quantum leap. So what I want to do because of the time, I want to just show you, you know, some topics that um, I believe that when a person learns these topics, maybe in the future sometimes we'll go into detail uh, on these um, topics. So there's a science to what we do, and I don't know if we all have the same definition of, of science. To, you, know, you know, in my own uh, path, when I say science is something that somebody can learn, and if they do, if they apply it, they will come with a very similar result. What, what, what differs is the, the magnitude or the quality and the hand uh, that has applied it. So there's this thing called the art of choice. Now, the, this art of choice, it's a, there's some components of it that define this process, but we're not taught and we don't realize that this is what is happening. You know, so let me ask you that every day when you are moving around, what is the one thing that is happening? Uh, what, what are you absorbing into your head? And you see that it is information, but that information, is it any good? Uh, as information, of course, is not, it, it's not. It has to go into knowledge. From that knowledge, it must transform into understanding. Understanding, what is understanding? Understanding is knowing how to apply knowledge for the utility of humanity. In other words, for your purpose, because everybody has got that. Then from there, that understanding must have a kind of wisdom. And the wisdom, um, the, the, this understanding is controlled by two things, the wisdom and the skill. And then from there, the skill allows you the ability to create choices. And out of those choices, you have to choose. And then to choose, you decide. There are many people who get, who just move from here, from here to there, and they stop there. They don't know what to do. They don't have this. Now, when you attend, when you attend these, these uh, uh, seminars like this, that's when you, you get the wisdom, you get the skill, and they, they, they teach you about choices. You know, so somebody will say, I wanna go to real estate, I wanna go and do a direct marketing, I wanna be a doctor, I wanna be so forth and so forth. There are many choices, but I tell you what, when I was studying, I, I drove Uber. Uber, you know, I'm sure <laughs> many of you know Uber, I think it's not there in Zambia, but it's like, you know, this taxi business. So I know that I think I think that 95% of people don't know they don't they don't like their jobs, right? And they're not happy with their managers, <laughs> and they don't know really they don't know what to do. They may have a degree in whatever it is they, but they're not happy in it. But they don't know what to do. They don't know how to choose. So they don't know how to choose. They haven't chosen the right thing because they didn't know how to choose, and they still don't know how to choose because they don't have the science to do it. So that's why you know, motivational training like this uh, is important to help people because if you don't choose, then you cannot decide. If you don't decide, then you cannot act. So this is just a brief introduction uh, into this. Finally, there's uh, one thing that uh, I use. It works for government, I mean, for any organization, it works for a person. You know, if you're gonna change, you are transforming, you know, that you are going to a totally different person so that the next stage, you are, your, your value explodes and increases at the next stage. That's why they call it quantum leap, which, which, is, which is affected by people, what people call a paradigm shift. But this, so in the process, when you have created your vision, you're gonna find that there are three things that must support it. Your means, what is your means? For example, you have one of the means that you have is this platform, this training platform. If you don't have these means, 
then you, 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 wouldn't, you wouldn't get where you need to be. It's important that you have the means to do it. And then the value system, what kind of behavior are you going to model to do, the, to do this thing? You know, because the, your value system, your values are important uh, to guide you to, to, to stay consistent with your vision. And then the strategy, of course, when I say strategy, I mean, what is it that, that you're gonna do that will, that will bring and introduce that leap? The loop, the, the leap is a function of a strategy. Having known the vision, having got the means, having got the value system is a strategy that you take. So this is another, another element, another process uh, that is I'm saying, I'm just trying to show you the various aspects of the science of um, of of a vision i got one i got four minutes do i have four minutes how much time do i have reverend four minutes right yes sir okay thank you so but you, can, you can go you can go nine minutes sir please you can, okay. you can go nine minutes okay thank eight you. zero five yes sir. okay so so like i say i'm just introducing this there will come a time hopefully maybe uh, when we can go into each one in detail. Now, the key thing is that when you have this kind of information, right, you cannot help but let, you cannot help but explode. Your growth will explode because you have the tools. Because we are made in such a way that when we engage these little things about the way our mind works and the way uh, the way the human is designed to work and the way we can manage and control the environment that we have. That's what I'm an engineer by, by profession. So that's what we do. We control the environment so that we can produce the product. It doesn't matter uh, whether they're gonna go to the moon or they're going to um, design a car. Uh, so you have to know the environment, you, uh, but you must have the tools. So these are the engineering tools that a person needs to have to advance. Now, this map here, if you have this, when you have your vision, when you make sure that you've got your means, you're gonna behave well, and you have one, what would be a transformational strategy? For example, if somebody says, okay, I want to, you know, I want to, hey, I want to have a big house and a great life. So and they got, you know, and they, they are high school, all they did is get high school. They say, okay, I'm gonna to go to college. Okay, I'm gonna do a master's. Or somebody will say, you know what, I did bachelor's, but in order for me into the, to go into the environmental sector right now, which is in demand, I have to get a PhD. And then they go and do it. And then from there, the life is going to be different. So now the, 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 there's one more thing, one more, the one last thing that I can, I can, I can um, talk about. I want to remove this here so that we can see. Now, vision clarity, right? There's a saying that uh, I, um, I, I stumbled into uh, one day and I stumbled it in my, in my own mind. Uh, and it says, when you have a vision and it's clear and you start walking, the people, the places and the things will start working with you and will meet you in proportion to the momentum that you create. So vision clarity is, is important because when you start working, there's some you there's you there's some frequency that you engage and the place that you are gonna rent your place the person the person begins to give to give notice the car that you want to buy somebody's gonna think to sell it and if it's a new one you know the, the production line is gonna be speeded up to you know to to meet with your timing so the the when you start move forward, like when you decide right now, I think there's a business that you are all, you know, uh, running behind. When your mind is not very clear that that's what you want to do, everything else will not happen. When you choose that this is what I want, right? And, and your vision is very clear, you're going to find the everything goes smooth. But how do you do this? There's a process that we call you, have, you know, of clarity that you call you qualified and say, what is it exactly? You quantify it. How much is it? What is the scalability? And then what is the sense? Does it have a sense of schedule? Now, knowing about the sense of schedule means that sometimes there's an intervention that you may have to do. There may be things that you may need to stop, you know, you know that, may in, but that may interfere in what you want to do. Now, and then also there's a thing called um, 
justifying. So the most single powerful thing after creating a vision is justifying it. Why you wanna do it? Because it determines every, some people say, when the why is strong enough, the how doesn't matter. In other words, when the why is strong enough, everything else is a function of process. In other words, if you start moving, things will start moving, things will open, you will begin to open up. Because, you know, I didn't know, we are working on a project. I didn't know I was gonna meet the, the reverend. And I ended up meeting him because of divine serendipity. So divine serendipity happens when you have made a decision and you start working. So these are some of the things that, uh, that at some point I'd like to go through them in a way that we are focused in it and I can put a little bit more emotion than uh, the kind of uh, lecture approach that, uh, <laughs> that uh, you know, of introducing these, these important uh, features. So, you know, I don't know if we have time for, for any, any questions um, at all. Um, well, uh, yes, you could probably answer a couple. There's no harm. Uh, yeah. This is a very unique presentation and it's worthwhile. So I would, uh, I would certainly permit. So what we can do is uh, probably allow, wait, well, is probably allow for, for um, uh, anybody that's interested in asking a question, you may stretch your hand uh, and then uh, we, can, we can allow you to quickly ask the prof uh, a question and then we can proceed from there. So anybody that has a question, feel, feel free to raise your hand and we will certainly uh, take your question immediately. Uh, anyone very quickly? We have about maybe three minutes or so. Okay, Auntie Sylvia, please go ahead. What is it that causes uh, people prof not to choose? I think there, there are a number of, I think there are a number of things. Uh, a major part of it is uh, ignorance, uh, lack of sense of agency. But I think the number one is fear. At the end of the day, uh, people are afraid. When we say choosing, you are choosing the, 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 the you know, that choice that you're going to act on, the thing that you're going to act on. So nine times out of 10, people are afraid. Uh, and also it's a function of, of not knowing because we're not trained in these things. I don't know if that answers the question. Yes, I think it does. Yes, 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 Prof, it does. And that's what amazes me. Wonderful, Prof. You can, you could, you. anybody else with another question, you can see definitely we're calling Prof back for many more. Uh, meetings. After all, we're working with him very closely, so you, you, this is not the last time you see him. Uh, any one more question, perhaps uh, eight zero four. We're mindful of time. Just one more question. Uh, of course, there's a very powerful uh, 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 um, map he has there, a mental map, which Prof, you'll be coming to explain properly, <laughs> mm -hmm. especially. But anyone else with a question? Uh, just one more question from anybody. Uh, and then we, we we call it a morning. Okay, so nobody has a question. Prof, they are overwhelmed. So at this point, <laughs> Prof, uh, I'll allow my our leader and upline in the, in the business here in Zambia, Dr. Nelly, to also come through and give her, 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 her feedback. And then uh, we will ask you to do your concluding remarks. Dr. Thank Nelly, you. Dr. Nelly, are you available? Um, good morning, everybody. What a lovely Monday. What a way to start the week. This is so amazing. I think uh, the only thing I would love to say is uh, we need uh, Prof back, um, if possible, um, this week. We, we need him back. You know, th there's too much data that he has that he hasn't really uh, given to us uh, because of time. So I'm proposing mm. that we, we get him on another day. You check up with him when he's available. I'm willing to give up my mm. day if that's, um, that's still okay yeah. um, for him to yeah. show up and I'll give him the whole 30 minutes. Thank you. Yes. Wonderful prof. So you see, we will he definitely see- He can continue tomorrow. 
He can continue tomorrow. <laughs> like a prophecy. <laughs> So tomorrow, I so will give you my day tomorrow. I second, I second. <laughs> yes, sir. Okay, great. Because All right, so there you have it, Prof. Yeah, so the matter is settled. Yeah. I settled, uh, Prof. We have decided tomorrow, clean up your day. We need to hear more, and tomorrow we will give you the 30 minutes. Thank you so much. All right. Yes. Uh, thank you. Yeah. So what yeah. We'll look on to Yes. Yes. So what we'll do tomorrow when we will discuss it. So meantime, Prof, your concluding remarks. Well, thank you very much. Um, you know, I I want to say like, okay, I, I sure do that thing here. That's another thing. I just want to tease you that one of the things that we're going to talk about. This, this thing here, because vision is so key, and I'm sure you've been talking about, about the vision, because that vision there is a key yes. to a quantum leap, so we're going to be talking about that, uh, and these are the things that I came across, so, but I want to encourage each and every person here uh, and say that uh, it is doable. You know, the one thing that I can say is that the idea that you have, you're not crazy, the idea that you have is not just something, it's not just a thought. The idea that you have is a seed that God put in you. Now, human beings carry seeds, you know, uh, each one has got uh, one particular seed and that seed uh, is packaged by God to unfold the way a seed. So the mind uh, is to the idea what the seed is to the ground. So every seed has got a, its own mental mechanics. I mean, sorry, it's got, a, it's, got its own mechanics, biological, a spiritual, intellectual, that when you put it in the ground, it knows where it is, exactly where it is, and it knows it is to, choose, to shoot upwards. And if it's, it's, it meets a rock, it knows how to do, and then it will produce that particular fruit or that particular height of the branch and everything, it doesn't change. If you see the Musasa trees, if you go there, you find, if you look from the top, they're all the same. So I'm saying that the idea that you have, whatever it is that you want to do, it's a purpose that God has put in you because only you can do it. Only you can do it. And somebody somewhere is waiting for you. Imagine if the Reverend here and uh, Dr. Nelly and uh, Sister Sylvia here, if they were not doing what they were doing, it, a lot of people will just wait. You see, once God has chosen your own person that's going to mentor you, I mean, he's chosen the people that you are going to help and mentor. So if you don't move, they don't move. That's why it's so critical that when you have your vision, start walking. When you start walking, everything else will move. There, there are two types of people that I've come across to learn that, number one, there's a visionary person. A visionary person, their strategy is based on their action. Now, their strategy is a function of what? Of action. They'll say, oh my God, like, I, like, I'll give you an example of this Africa thing that we're doing in 2000. You say, oh, I want to find out why Africa cannot be transformed. Then you start going, it's such a, uh, it's such a big, massive thing, <laughs> you know, but you have to, if you, if your mind is in it, it's in it because God has put in it, has put it. And God, when you start moving, everything will support, right? The people that we have, that I've come to know here, is divine serendipity. The people are already there. The money is already there. You see, you don't have to start with money. The money, your idea, once packaged properly, especially using the science that we're talking about, right? Including this thing called faith. It become, you become a magnetic living system so that you are able to, to attract everything. So when you start moving, like I said, eh, you know, the people, the places and the things without choice, they will start to walk. They may come from Russia or, or China or South America or Britain just to visit as if on a business or vacation, but they've been sent to fix your path. Thank you very much. Wow, Prof, this is profound. 
I have no words, but thank you so much. Prof, we look forward to having you tomorrow. I will certainly talk with you behind the scenes so that we lock in everything. And then uh, like uh, we have said, this will be like literally, you have full 30 minutes on all all the two days, including the other week, if you're still not done. Yeah. <laughs> but we, definitely, I, this is very powerful. And yes, it's true. Divine serendipity. That's a new word you. I'll be using. I know about serendipity, but I just never added the divine to it. So I love that. So <laughs> it's amazing if one looks at how we've been learning. Cheryl, a couple of days ago, was teaching about the seed. Look at how that ties in now so powerfully. It's just that you wouldn't know, Prof, but just take it from us. There's been so many lessons behind the scenes before you even came. And what you're saying, anybody who's followed these morning calls is like, oh my God, this is, this is so divine because he's coming to pick up things that have been said in the past. So this shows that whatever we're doing here, this is not a joke, ladies and gentlemen. Those of you who are going to catch this, you are going to achieve a quantum leap this year. Those who do not catch it, you'll just be one of those who'll be saying, wow, our friends. But you're not designed to be saying, wow, our friends. You're supposed to be part of that revolution moving in the direction of success. Prof, we are so honored and so grateful. We look forward to having you tomorrow, Prof. Uh, I know this is very late for you now, so you're probably going to go hit the sack now. But thank you so much for taking yeah. your time, Prof. Yeah, thank you very much. I'm not so, going to tell you that I'm going. I'm not going to tell you that I'm going to take a shower because it's too hot here before I sleep. <laughs> it's so hot here. Man. All right, thank you very much. I hope we'll make it tomorrow. I'm going to check the calendar uh, and see. Thank you, thank you, everybody. I'm the num I'm your number You're one. Most fan. welcome. I'm your number one most fan. I love you all. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. God bless you all, everybody. Is it